There's this door on the 10th floor of the Vox Media office that I hate so much. God. You ever get this door wrong? Pretty regularly. Have you seen people misuse it? All the time, every day. Constantly. I hate this door. <laughs> Me too, Kelsey. But here's the thing. As soon as you start looking for confusing doors, they are everywhere. It's push. Why? I feel like Roman Mars would know about this. This is 99% invisible, and those doors you hate are called Norman doors. Um, what's a Norman door? Don Norman wrote the essential book about design. He is the right. Norman of the Norman door. All right, and where is this guy? You must go to San Diego. Okay. <laughs> Hey, I'm Don Norman. I'm... Gee, you know, it's hard to describe what I am. Well, he's been a professor of psychology, professor of cognitive science, professor of computer science, a vice president of advanced technology at Apple. But for our purposes... I was spending a year in England, and I got so frustrated with my inability to use the light switches and the water taps and the doors, even, that I wrote this book. If I continually get a door wrong, is it my fault? No. In fact, if you continually get it wrong, it's a good... And if other people continually get it wrong, good sign that it's a really bad door. A Norman door is one where the design tells you to do the opposite of what you're actually supposed to do, or gives the wrong signal and needs a sign to correct it. Why does it need an instruction manual? That is, why do you have to have a sign that says push or pull? Why not make it obvious? It can be obvious if it's designed right. There are a couple of really simple basic principles of design, and one of them I'll call discoverability. When I look at something, I should be able to discover what operations I can do. The principle applies to a whole lot more than doors. And it's amazing with many of our computer systems today, you can look at it, there's no way of knowing what's possible. Should I uh, tap it once or twice or even triple tap? So discoverability, when it's not there, well, you don't know how to use something. Another is feedback. And so many times there's no feedback. You have no idea what happened or why it happened. And these principles form the basis of how designers and engineers work today commonly known as user or human-centered design. I decided at one point the word user was a bit degrading. Why not call people people? And it's amazingly simple and amazingly seldom practiced. We call it iterative because it sort of goes around in a circle. We go out and we observe what is happening today. We observe people doing the task. And from that, we say, oh, we have some ideas. Here's what we should perhaps propose to do. Then you prototype your solution and test it. Quite often these are wrong at first, but each time we go around the circle, we do a better job of making the device until the point we're actually making something that really works. And this process has spread all over the world. And it turns out it's improving lives. From better everyday things like the ones that Don wrote about. To using the same process to solve huge problems in public health in developing countries. Water. Sanitation. Farming. Lots more. 